Hello, my name is Ethan Arrowood, and I am a Node.js developer. Today, we will be adding process arguments to my setup database script that I am writing in a project of mine. This project is going to be a application that tracks data of um, summer camp uh, campers, and the database that we that I'm going to be using to track this data needs um, some things set up when the it is initially deployed. That is the purpose of the script. A uh, quick walkthrough of what it, we're doing so far is we start off by creating a logger and we get environment variables or generate environment variables then we load them in and then we build a script. Uh, we build the data, um, the raw data into a JSON formats that are able to be used in the database then we connect to that database. From there, we set up schemas and tables. Then we seed the database. And then we create roles for users so that in the future, um, there's going to be different permissions for read and write access on this database. In order to add, or first of all, what are process arguments? In, in Node.js, process arguments are similar to a function argument except you can pass it to a file when you run it from the command line. This is important because when I deploy this setup script on a virtual AWS instance, I need to be able to run it with certain things toggled on and off from the command line via SSH. Currently, in order to interact with this setup script, you have to manually change these Boolean values from true to false and false to true or so on and so forth in order to get things to work as expected. As an example, well, before we, before I start showing you guys examples, let me get the process arg parser um, installed on this project. To do that, we're going to run npm i hyphen s m i n i m i s t minimist. As that loads in, I'm going to come up here and we're going to add it in. I'm going to write const minimist equals require minimist. And yes, I know I just deleted a, a line. Uh, that was an unused import, and I meant to get rid of it in previous commit anyways. Great. So we have done that. Now we're going to go down to our, uh, to our setup, the initialize database command. We're going to go ahead and we're going to run we're going to run parse args is going to equal minimist process dot argv dot slice two. The first two arguments in the um, in a process dot argv is actually I believe the paths or something along those lines. So we're going to skip those. Next, I'm going to add a console dot log here of the parse args. That way you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to save this file. I'm going to go ahead and turn this to false, just so we're not um, just uh, just in order to keep the logger output in the file rather than on the command line. And I'll get into more details about what I mean in that in just a minute. But to give you guys an idea of what we're going to be, what the goal is here is when I run the setup command, I want to be able to specify something along these lines. Use stt out. This is going to be the first parameter that we add to our to the file. And when I run this, notice how this says true. We're going to be able to take this argument and I want to pass it to this function here, the logger function, and tell the logger function I want you to print the logs to the console rather than print it to a log file. To do that, we're going to destructure this, the parsed arguments. And we're going to do this inline. And we're going to also default the use SCTD out to false. Cool. Let's delete this line, and then we're going to go in here and we're going to actually add this Boolean straight into the function line. Now, when we row ahead and we run this, this line, you'll notice that the log output is going to be in the command line rather than in a log file. In order to achieve this in the generate or the get CDB logger, I have a parameter here. Uh, the second argument is actually reset, or uh, sorry, my bad, 
the second argument here is is use SCDL and it's a boolean type and that it determines whether or not to write the output to a file or to print it to the console the next um, the next few properties I want to add on here I'm going to add as a comment above first that way I give you guys an idea of what we're you know what we're going for here start off we're gonna have reset roles the reset roles is going to reset the database user roles then I'm going to have reset environment this is going to reset the env file which is going to contain the database access credentials next we're going to reset the Viking honors data the Viking honors data is going to reset the DB schema tables and entries this is um, Viking honors is the name of the types of skills that I'm tracking in this database it's um, summer campy so it's okay if you guys don't understand what it means next we're gonna run reset JSON and reset JSON is going to reset the data dot JSON files now this is an interesting script or this is an interesting interesting boolean variable because the reset JSON is also going to affect the reset VH data so we need to be able to set up this destructuring here that when reset JSON is toggled true this gets toggled true as well because when we reset the data here this is going to generate new UUIDs that is used to track the different tests that we're tracking in these tables when those when that new data is created we need to reflect that in the database otherwise we're going to have mismatched information similarly we're going to have a reset all command the reset all command is going to reset logs and it's also going to run reset json reset env and reset roles and just like before we don't need to run reset vh data because reset json will auto toggle that one for us so let's add these directly in line here the first one we're going to add is going to be reset all and this is going to always default to false if it's passed in it'll be true the next one we're going to add is reset json reset json if you remember is dependent on reset all we know that because reset all is going to call reset json is going to toggle reset json in order to achieve that in our object destructuring assignment we're actually going to use the or operator and we're going to say reset all or false and let's let me take a moment and explain what's going on here when we pass an object or in 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 es6 when we use destructuring and we go ahead and we write constant we're going to have a property foo it's going to equal we're going to take that off of some other object that might have you know bar is one and fuzz is two and maybe the, va the value foo is three what this would evaluate to is that foo would equal three when we're done here with this destructuring however what if foo was not defined right foo would then actually equal in this instance undefined or because it's destructuring it wouldn't even get defined at all it would simply just not exist this javascript would know to say hey foo is not in this object so we're just going to go do nothing without it but we want to make sure that these booleans these reset flags at least default to false in this example i would write you know foo let's let's say we default to 100 here so this was this works you know if now because we've done we've added in a default parameter to this destructuring assignment foo will equal 100 when it's not specified in the object but what if we want to make foo dependent on bar just like reset json is dependent on reset all if we were to go ahead and add bar or 100 now because bar is defined in this object foo would actually equal one but if foo was defined in this object foo you know is three this would actually in order of operations for destructuring would assign foo to the value three 
And if bar did not exist and foo did not exist, then foo would actually evaluate to 100 or be defined as 100 because of this default assignment. Great. Now that that is explained, let's go ahead and let's add the remaining, the remaining process arguments. So we're going to add reset vh data. And this one is dependent on reset JSON, or otherwise it'll be false. Then we have reset environment. This is dependent on reset all, otherwise false. And then we have reset roles. This is going to be dependent on reset all as well. Otherwise, we want it to default to false. Great, let's save that. And now let's go ahead and add these to our file. So remember that the logger is going to reset itself only when reset all is toggled. So let's put that in here. The generate environment variables will reset itself when reset env is turned on. The build data, which is responsible for the JSON, is going to reset itself well when reset JSON is turned on. Scroll down a little bit. You'll notice here is a good use of process environment, which is actually pulling the environment variables that are generated in this line here and then required in using the .env um, module. We want to reset the sch schema and tables when reset vh data is turned on. The C database will always run, uh, does not need to be reset because the entries will always be reset with the schema and tables. And then finally, the roles will be reset when we specify reset roles. Good. Let's go ahead and clear the, clear the console. And let's, you know, let's get to running this. So let's scroll back up to our kind of config here. When we run the setup script the first time, let's first of all, let's run this and let's reset everything. Okay, by running reset all, we have a typo. Great, okay, that fixed it. So now we run reset all, reset JSON should be true, VH data should be true, and V should be true, roles should be true, and everything should get reset. And we didn't specify to use std out, so everything should be in our log file. And if you look in our log file, everything is in there. Now let's run this exact command with reset all, but this time let's use the stt, let's use std out. This time, you notice the log went away, currently has nothing in it, it's empty. However, in our in our console, you can see everything was done correctly. We generated environment variables. We built the raw, raw JSON data. We dropped the schema and tables. We created new ones. We inserted records. We removed the roles, and then we created new roles. Perfect. Let's go ahead and continue to use std out. But this time, let's only reset the environment variables. The expected output of this line will be that all of the fields that aren't being reset will simply say not required or already exists. This line, so we said reset env and the env file already exists. This behavior is both expected and unexpected. It is expected because we spelled or we used the wrong capitalization of env. However, it is slightly unexpected because when we correctly capitalize this line, we should see the new environment variables are created, but everything else remains untouched. Let's go ahead and add some more. Let's reset the roles as well. Perfect. The roles were reset as well as the environment variables. The data was untouched. Let's flip this. Let's just reset the JSON data. When we do this, the roles should stay untouched, the environment variables should stay untouched, but the build data as well as the database data should get reset. 
Perfect, as expected. New data was generated. We reset the database. We inserted the new records. Finally, let's just reset the Viking Honors data and not the JSON. And as expected, environment variables stay the same. The build data stays the same. The database gets new information, but the roles do not get recreated. Wonderful. And with that, that is going to be the end of this um, the end of this video. If you have any questions about what I've done here, please ask in the comments. I'd be happy to answer. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you very much and see you next time.